Uh, in the Senate, we, we are off and running as well. I have no idea how many bills we have, but we have too many. And uh, so um, we're sorting through those and trying to figure out the good ones and the bad ones. As, uh, I, I chair uh, Homeland Security and Transportation in the Senate, and I think I was assigned, I don't know, probably 40 bills or so that I, it's my job to sort through and decide which ones should get a hearing and which ones should. On, on Thursday, we voted on the floor on, a, on an adoption bill. And uh, this will give you kind of a flavor of what we deal with in, uh, in the legislature. You have a wide range of different things that you have to, you have to at times really think about. And this adoption bill would allow individuals who are adopted to go back and find the records of their uh, birth parents, um, specifically their mother in, in most cases. Oh, that is, that at the time that they were adopted in Indiana, there's no record there was no requirement that a birth parent reveal who they are. And so, as a legislator, I was forced to sit there and think, which is fair? Do we allow these adopted kids to have access to their past records, revealing who their birth mother was, when the birth mother at the time she gave up her child um, was under the impression that she would never be revealed unless she chose to do so? And uh, now, there is a ca caveat in that bill that allows the birth mother to still sign a paper that, that would not allow them to be revealed. The problem is, what if this birth mother moved to Arizona or somewhere? She has no idea what changed the law, and so she doesn't sign the waiver or sign the paper, and she's revealed to her adopted child. Anyway, and I've adopted the child, so it's, it's fairly close to me. But in the end, the bill passed 44 to 3. And I was one of the three votes against it because in the end I felt like we had made a promise to those birth mothers and I, I don't know why we would go around that. I think that should trump it. As I'm working on, personally, I had my first bill passed out this week on, uh, yesterday actually, that helps the RV industry a little bit. Uh, the bill allows for them to transport RVs uh, from, uh, from their manufacturing place to, to the retailer without having to have a chauffeur's license. Um, you may think that's not a big deal, but in Indiana, we, we now manufacture 80% of all RVs. Um, 255,000 RVs, I think, left our manufacturing plants last year. That's over 1,000 RVs every working day that, that go to retailers. And uh, there's now, at times, over a six-week backlog in finding people to deliver these RVs because they don't have a license. Licenses. And the other crazy thing is, when you drive it off the lot, in a lot of cases, after you buy the RV, you don't need a chauffeur's license. Due to transportation and homeland security, and so I'm still learning that. I've never even sat on the committee before, and suddenly I'm chairing it, so it's uh, kind of drinking out of fire in this type of situation. Um, one of the bigger issues in the state of Indiana, and, and nationally, as Dan can probably attest to, is funding uh, for our transportation our roads. Um, NDOT has come out with a study that shows that we need roughly $700 million a year to get our roads and our bridges back up to snuff to get them where they need to be and to maintain it and to start some new projects as well. So uh, my understanding is we don't have $700 million laying around currently um, a year, so we've got to figure out what we're going to do. Um, we're kind of in a position right now where we decide which are the most important. And that's never a good situation to be. Indiana's fiscally in very good shape, so I think we can figure it out and it be okay. But um, it's certainly going to be a focus of discussion. One other pretty neat bill I'm carrying uh, came out of the VA hospital, uh, talking to an individual there and talking to one of my co workers for Marlon Stutzman, uh, brought up the issue of you can get a military, military designation on your driver's license if you're a veteran, except if you're a naval veteran for some reason, which means it really does is it allows current members of the military to have a distinction put on their license. It allows the naval guys, the naval veterans, as well as every other veteran to have that distinction put on their license as well. So when a restaurant is, is offering a discount to veterans or whatever, all you have to do is show your license and it's right there. And I'll, I'll be hearing that in my committee on next Tuesday, and uh, I would be shocked if there's a lot of problems with it because I think it's just a, a common sense great idea. Um, the BMB is not thoroughly excited about it because it costs them about fifty to hundred thousand dollars to do, but they can suck it up. The amount of bills that are in in the in the hopper that we're working on, you start to think, this is ridiculous how much more government ran. But you gotta realize a lot of these bills are actually undoing government. Um, 
trying to, to minimize things. So not all bills are, are big government bills. Some of these bills are intended to provide less government. So um, it's not as bad as it seems sometimes. There are plenty of bad bills out there. I'll say.